Hey, my name is Steve. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will cover the 2018 HSC Mathematics Extension 1 past paper in session 1, question 1 to 5. So here's the first question. We have a polynomial 2x cubed plus 6x x squared minus 7x minus 10 has three zeros, alpha, beta, and gamma. So the question is, what is the value, what's the value of the product of these three zeros and then times the sum of these three zeros. So in this question, we need these two formulas. The product of three zeros equal to negative d over a. The sum of these three zeros equal to negative b over a. So we have the coefficient number of a, b, c, d representing these th four coefficient number. So a, b, c, d. So we have here represent the a, here represent b, here is c, here is d. Okay? So using these two formulas and summing the coefficient numbers into these two formulas, and then we can find the value of the question. Okay? Um, alpha beta times gamma equal to this one. So we have alpha times beta times gamma equals to negative d is negative 10. So negative, negative 10. Divided, divided by a is 2, is 2. Positive, positive, we got neg negative, so equal to 5. And then alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to negative b over a. So negative b is 6, a is 2, equal to negative 3. Okay, so the, the question is, this one times this one, which means we have 5 times negative 3, so equal to negative 15. Okay, the question, so the answer would be B. B, okay, B is your question, which is the answer. Okay, let's go to question 2. The question is, the Q angle between two lines, the first one is y equal to 3x, the other one is y equal to 5x, is theta. So what's the value for 10 theta? So we have three, we have two lines formed with this acute angle. For this question, we need this formula, 10 theta equal to m1 and minus the absolute value of m1 minus m2 divided by 1 plus m1 times m2. Because we have an absolute value here, so it doesn't matter which one is m1 or which one is m2. So m1, m2 representing the, the gradient of these two lines. So here we have that the gradient for this line is m1. So m1 equal to 3, m2 equal to 5. So solving these two numbers into these formulas, we have 10 theta of equal to the absolute value of 3 minus 5 divided by 1 plus 3 times 5 equal to uh, 3, minus, 3 minus 5 we have negative 2 here is 1 plus 15 16 equal to because we have an absolute value here so we don't need to worry about this negative, negative sign 2 divided by 16 equal to 1 over 8. Okay, so 1 over 8 would be A. So your, your final answer is A. Okay. Okay, let's go to question 3. In the question 3, the question is what's the value of the limit of sine 3x times cos 3x divided by 12x when x is approaching to 0? So when x is approaching to 0, we have the numerator is 0. Um, 12x denominator is 0. We are having um, a 0 divided by 0 forms. Okay? Um, I will introduce two methods to do this question. The first one is we can convert this we can convert this sine 3x and cos 3x into using this method to have limit as x approaching to 0 into um, sine 3x times cos 3x into half sine 6x, okay? Using this, two this formula. 
divided by 12x. And then we can bring in this half into this numerator equal to oh, equal to the limit x go to 0 we have sine 6x divided by 24x okay because we are assuming um, the limit x go to 0 sine x divided by x equal to 1 so we have this one where x is very very small we are assuming x is roughly equal to sine x then we have a 1 for this limit okay so in order to have a sine x divided by x form we have 6x here then we can break down this 24x into 4 times 6x okay so equal to the limit x go to in 0 sine 6x over 4 times 6x then we have a sine 6x divided by 6x form and then we can bring this 4 1 fourth outside the limit equal to 1 fourth the limit x go to 0 sine 6x divided by 6x in here we have the limit of sine 6x divided by 6x equal to 1 which means here we have 1 fourth times 1 equal to at the end the limit is 1 fourth okay so the answer would be um, a okay the second second method is I will introduce you to uh, use the L'Hopital's rule to find the limit of this one. Um, if you don't know what is L'Hopital's rule, um, you can go to the link below in my description or at the end of this video. I, ha I have another video to explain what is uh, L'Hopital's rule and how can we, how we can use L'Hopital's rule to find the limit of 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infin infinity form. Okay. We have L'Hopital's rule. Okay, under L'Hopital's rule, the limit of this is equal to is the derivative of this of this one. So um, so this one equal to the, the limit of x go to zero. We have the sine three x times cos 3x derivative divided by 12x derivative okay under under this one we need to apply the product rule so we have under limit x go to 0 under the product rule and also we have to apply the chain rule for this 3x for the first one we have 3 cos 3x so the, the derivative of sine 3x equals 3 cos 3x and then times cos 3x plus and sine 3x uh, times the derivative of cos 3x equals to negative negative sine oh, negative 3 sine 3x and then divided by 12x we have 12 then we are we are not having a 0 0 divided by 0 form so here is not um, when x goes to 0 cos 3x cos 3x is 1 sine 3x and sine 3x is, is 0 we are having um, the limit x go to 0 3 cos okay because here's one here's one so we are having three times one times one my plus zero times zero divided by 12 okay so we can find the limit at, the, at this step uh, x goes to zero here is three here's zero here's 12 at the end we have three divided by 12 equal to one over four okay we're, we're having the same result in these two methods you can do 
Do the question in this one or either this one. Okay. Okay, go to the next question. Question four. In question four, the diagram shows, so here's the diagram, shows the graph of this equation y equal to a times a plus b times a plus c and then times x plus d squared. So what's the possible values of these four, four numbers, a, b, c, d, a, b, c, d, so a, b, c, d. So look at, look at this graph. We have these two single roots for, for this function. And here is a double root. Comparing the result of this graph in, with this original equation, here is a double root. B and C are single roots. A, um, we, can, we will look at the A later, okay? We, because D is a double root, we, which means we, have, we can confirm that D is to this point. Then we can say from this point, then we can confirm d equal to negative 1 which, because we have a positive side. So for example, x minus, minus 1 squared. Then the 0 root is 1, right? So we have a 0 root is 1. But here is positive, which means d has to be negative 1. Then we can have a look at the four options in the question. If d has to be ne negative 1, only B and D would be the possible answer, right? Which means we can cross out A and cross out the C. Okay? And the B and C. Uh, in the B and D options, B and C are the same. So we can we can skip this step to have a look at the A. So A is the only difference between B and D, right? How can we find the value of A? When we can have a look at this point, when x is equal to 0, x equal to 0, which means y equal to a times b times c times d squared. So um, y, when x is equal to 0, equal to a times b times t times c and then times d squared. Okay? And D has been confirmed is um, negative 1. And because when x equal to 0, which means y0 equal to negative 6. B and C, we can, we can tell B and C from the options is 2 and 1. So here, equal to A times 2 times 1 times negative 1 squared. Right, so this one equal to negative 6. Um, 2 times 1 times 1, we have 2a equal to negative 6, which means a equal to negative 6 divided by 2. So a equal to negative 3. Then a is confirmed is negative 3. So this one is confirmed. This one is confirmed. Then which means your final answer is has to be d. Okay, it's this one. Okay, let's go to question five. The question five, um, the diagram shows the number of penguins. We're using PT to represent the number of penguins on an island at time t. So here's the diagrams. T is the time, so P representing the number of penguins. So the question is, which equation best representing this graph? So we have four equations. So we have to look at this graph very carefully and see which one can match this diagram, okay? Um, we can find two conditions from the graph. For example, uh, PT is starting from 3000 at time equal to zero. So here is a zero point. Um, the number of penguins at the in the initial point is 3000. And then when t goes to infinity, the number of penguins will be decreasing until go to 1500. One, 1, so here is one condition. Another condition is, so here's the first one, here's the second one. Okay, the first one is when t equal to zero, p, p 
zero equal to three thousand. Here's the first condition. The second condition is when t go to infinity, the number of penguins goes to one one thousand five hundred. Okay, let's check these two conditions with these four equations. Um, because here, e to the power of negative kt is the only one variable related to the t. We have um, when t equal to 0, um, e to the, to the power of negative kt equal to, so here would be e to the power of 0 equal to 1, right? Which means this part is 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, then have a look at a, when t equals 0, here's 1. We have 1,500 1, plus 1,500 is 3,000. Then A matches the first condition. Okay, let's have a look at B. 3,000 minus 1, 1,500. Here is 1,500. The, the option B doesn't match the first condition. Then we can eliminate B. So B is not correct. Okay, let's have a look at C. Um, T equals 0 equal to 3,000 plus uh, 1,500 is 4,500. It's not equal to 3,000, right? So we can eliminate C as well. So C is not correct. Then have a look at D. Um, P0 equal to 4,500 4, minus 1,500 equal to 3,000. At the first condition, D is okay. A, A is okay, right? Okay, then have a look. The second condition is when T go to infinity. When T go to infinity, the limit of, uh, okay, the limit T go to infinity of E to the power of negative KT. Um, when t go to infinity, this one actually is go to zero. Okay, so the graph for for this one is so here's one. So this um here is t. When t go to in positive infinity, the function of e to the power of negative kt is approaching to zero. Okay, so this one is zero. So this one is zero, this one is zero. And then check the second condition. Okay, uh, this one. Then um, when t go to infinity, for this one we have 1,500 plus, this one is zero, which means p, this one will be uh, 1,500 only. And for the D, um, this one will be 0, which means PT equal to 4,500 4, minus 0 is 4,500. But the first, second condition is when XT goes to, go to positive infinity, we have PT goes to 1,500, right? Which means here is the only one answer is correct. This one. Then this one's not correct. Then D, we can eliminate the D. A is the final answer is correct. Okay? It's A. Yeah. That would be all for the questions from 1 to 5 in the 2018 HSC Mathematics Extension 1 Pass paper. In the next video, I've covered the same paper from question 6 to question 10. Um, I just mentioned the L'Hopital's rule. If you don't know the, what, what the L'Hopital's rule is, uh, please go to the link in my description and have a look at another video to talk about the L'Hopital's rule. Um, L'Hopital's rule is a very good rule for us to handle two, two forms of limits, such as a 0 divided by 0 and another one is infinity divided by infinity. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.